Welcome to my keynote on deep learning for 3D point clouds and meshes. I'm Professor Ajmal from the University of Western Australia. Here's an overview of my presentation. I will introduce point clouds and convolutions, a spherical convolution kernel that we have designed specifically for point clouds, graph convolutional networks to work with the convolution kernel, and a fuzzy extension of the convolution kernel. We'll also, uh, I'll also discuss that. I'll also present uh, Picasso, which is a CUDA-based library we have developed specifically for deep learning from 3D meshes as well as point clouds. And finally, I'll present our work on relational graph network for object detection in point clouds. As you can see, our, the work that I'm going to present is covers uh, three CDPRs, a PAMI paper, and a TIP paper. So a common RGB camera captures the reflected light from points uh, in a scene. Range scanners such as LiDAR, Kinect, Minolta, PrimeSense, they capture the X, Y, Z locations of points in a scene to form a point cloud. Images are good at representing scenes that can be projected onto a plane. Uh, however, you cannot project uh, a complete city onto one plane. Point clouds can represent 3D geometry and you can make point clouds of complete cities, even the complete globe. Here are some sample point clouds. It has been captured by a 64 channel LiDAR. These point clouds are of Perth city. The colors over here uh, do not represent the colors of the objects, but are, are basically assigned based on segmentation. You know, so we have assigned a different color to buildings, a different color to uh, a bus, different colors to vegetation and, and so on. Some LiDARs will also give you the reflected uh, IR light and some RGB, uh, RGBD scanners will give you the RGB values uh, of the points as well. So convolution on point clouds. Convolution kernels allow hierarchical learning of local features. Downsampling the data with pooling makes the receptive field of the convolution kernel bigger at later layers to learn global features. Convolution in images exploits the grid-like structure of images, but point clouds do not have grid-like structure. So we want to use the power of convolution, but the conventional convolution does not suit point clouds. So one way to go around this problem is to convert point cloud to a grid-like structure. So make it uh, a structured uh, grid. For example, a 2D grid in depth images. This was the first attempt people did with 3D data to learn uh, from uh, features from uh, point clouds. However, in this case, we lose the X, Y axis, and it only works for point clouds captured from a single viewpoint, and it does not work for 360 degree point clouds that are commonly captured by LIDARs. Now, the other option is to convert the point clouds into a three-dimensional grid, uh, which is volumetric or vo vo voxel representation. And this would work with 3D CNNs. Point clouds represent surfaces and not volume. So using a 3D grid for point clouds is uh, inefficient. There will be a lots of voxels that are empty and only a few voxels will be, voxels will be occupied. Voxnet, ShapeNet are architectures that use voxels for deep learning. So convolution for surface point clouds is what we are interested in. We want to develop a convolution kernel that operates on point clouds representing surfaces. We don't want it to be edge-based because that is sensitive to the graph construction. We want the kernel to be fixed for efficiency, and hence a spherical kernel with spatial means in metric space seems to be a natural choice. With this motivation, we designed a spherical kernel. And we also show that uh, the spherical kernel is better suited for this kind of operation compared to the uh, grid-like uh, 3D CNN kernel. So here we show that our convolution kernel basically follow the uh, azimuth angle elevation angle and radius. So with these three parameters, we define our kernel and we convolve points in a pin with uh, a given weight and bias. <clears throat> this is how the feature maps are uh, calculated. It's basically exactly the same how we would calculate the feature maps uh, in normal 2D CNN. So we multiply uh, the previous layers feature maps with some weights that are learned and add a bias to it. And this is followed by a nonlinear activation. So the first architecture that we designed to work with uh, the spherical kernel was an octree-based graph, where we divide the space uh, into four bins 
multiple time so that eventually we have only one point left at the leaf node. And then we process the point, point cloud uh, from uh, the leaf nodes up to the uh, parent nodes so that we get a final representation of the points. So a bit about the octree like uh, structure, it downsamples the points very quickly. So if we have level one uh, point cloud of tiers like looking like this, at the second layer, it will become sparse like this. And at fourth layer, it will be hardly left with a few points. And at layer five, it does not even look like a chair. But building point uh, octrees is very efficient compared to KNN search and range search. And here we go show graphs how the complexity of KNN search increases very fast, whereas that of octree remains uh, still tractable. And the range search basically uh, has uh, an even nonlinear relationship uh, with the uh, number of input uh, points. Here we show KD tree search. In all three cases, the octree based uh, division of the point for to find neighborhoods is the most efficient. So this is our, our graph architecture, which basically works both for classification and for semantic segmentation. For classification, we only take the final layer output as features, and then we perform uh, a classification with uh, FC layers. To perform, uh, and we also pool the, uh, the features from the previous layers to get a more comprehensive uh, representation of the point cloud. But in case of segmentation, we actually take all the feature maps from, uh, from the previous layers so that we get a more denser representation with respect to every point so that we can assign one label to uh, every point uh, at the output. So here are some data sets that are uh, repeatedly used for in uh, multiple uh, works. So we use the uh, model at 40, which is complete objects, Monguf 2014, which is basically a facade in street, and ScanNet, which is the indoor uh, scenes. So I'll also use some other data sets later on, and I'll introduce them as they uh, come. So here are the data set statistics. Model Net 40 has basically 40 objects. ShapeNet has uh, 16,881 synthetic full uh, 3D models. And it has 16 categories each with two to five annotated parts. So we, have, we, we perform part, a part segmentation with uh, ShapeNet. So we also had ShapeNet over here on the right side of uh, model Net. So this is basically ShapeNet. And in addition to ScanNet, we have S3DIS, which I missed uh, previously. Yeah. So Pumongu has 700 meters of a European street uh, and seven, seven labels. It also gives the normals and RGB values. ScanNet also gives the RGB values. Uh, it has uh, 40 semantic labels, indoor scenes, and uh, here's a training test split. S3DIS is from Stanford, it's also 3D indoor scenes, and it uh, gives RGB values as well. And the, here are the labels that are uh, present in, in there. This data set is uh, captured with the Matterplot scanner. You will see these data sets commonly being used in comparison of different methods in the literature. So here are our results on the model net uh, data set. Uh, we also tested model net 10, which is a shorter version of the model net 40. And you can see that uh, at that time, with CVPR, at the time of CVPR 19, uh, we outperformed all, all the previous methods. Here are our results on the part segmentation uh, uh, problem. Uh, and uh, we also mentioned the number of levels in the oak tree and the uh, the feature maps that we construct uh, within the uh, network. As you can see, we have the highest mean intersection over union, uh, and uh, we also outperform all other methods in uh, quite a few categories, but not on all categories. Uh, so this uh, was also in CVR 2019. Here is visualization of some of the part segmentation results. This is to show that not the ground truth is not always correct, and hence, 
you know, within the last one, two percent difference between different methods, you know, you can hardly tell which one is better. Uh, here are some high quality segmentations that our method performed. So you see that the, uh, uh, our method uh, is very close to the ground truth, even with the, uh, uh, the handle of the bag over here and the X, XL of the skateboard. But here is some low quality segmentation that our method performed. But in this case, we can see that the ground truth is hardly accurate. And this, this bag is just one bag and it has, the ground truth has labeled the handles separately. And over here in the ground truth, uh, the, uh, the annotator has missed the legs of the chair, whereas our method has correctly found the legs of the chair. And for this skateboard, the axle has not been labeled, whereas our, our method has still found the axle of the uh, skateboard. So this is, uh, our, these are our results on the Lumongu data set. Here we also performed uh, the previous methods. Now, moving on to uh, graph convolutional network, you see that uh, the octree is not a very general purpose network. Uh, we'd rather uh, go along the way of uh, graph convolutions, which are more general, uh, and uh, we can have a more uh, variety in the process of graph construction. And we also uh, add another contribution, which is the separable convolutions to introduce that into uh, the uh, spherical convolution kernel. We have fewer parameters, fewer flops, and faster learning rate. And the implementation we have now moved on to, we move it on to TensorFlow and provide code for this uh, as well. So this is our uh, rough overview of our graph structure. Uh, the graph is, uh, so each point is a node and edges are constructed with range search in a specified radius of uh, each node. So we, we, we kind of have uh, not a mesh structure, but a graph structure where every node is connected to certain uh, number of uh, other nodes uh, in a given neighborhood. And then we uh, coarsen the graph as we go deeper in the network with furthest point sampling. We also define pooling and unpooling operations, which were kind of not uh, precisely defined in previous point cloud based uh, architectures. And you can find more details about them and even their implementation uh, that comes with our code. And with this uh, variant, we uh, published it uh, in PAMI. So it's written under revision here, but it's already, already published in 2020. So, how do we perform feature interpolation? We have multiple options in our network. So even though we go in one direction to present our results, we allow other options that can be selected if you uh, want to use our code. So we allow uniform interpolation as well as uh, weighted interpolation. Uh, uniform is of course faster than the weighted interpolation. Here is uh, a more detailed structure of our graph, uh, graph convolution. So uh, we also show a toy example input uh, and just to uh, show how the graph coarsening is done. So a toy example where a graph of 12 vertices gets coarsened to eight and then four vertices. And for classification, the decoder skips, uh, uh, the, the decoder and skip connections are moved. So this uh, architecture we have shown for semantic segmentation, where we have exactly the same number of output as the number of input points so that we can assign a label to every input point. And in this case, we use Sort of a unit like architecture where we have skipped connections from the encoder stage to the decoder stage. So here I have uh, a more detailed architecture with the exact number of uh, feature maps at every layer, but I'm not going to go into details. If you're interested, you can go through our paper and also the implementation. Here are, uh, are the hyperparameters that we use. Basically, we uh, use a 64 max neighborhood uh, to, to construct a graph. Our uh, kernel size is 0 0.1, that's basically uh, 0 0.1 meter. So uh, neighborhood it searches. This is the learning rate and momentum, batch size of 32 uh, and 16 for the bigger data sets. Here is visualization of the kernels that have been learned. So we give uh, heat pack value to every pin, uh, the parameter that is stored in every pin. And you can see that it is learning different type of 3D uh, features, uh, you know, some, uh, and we also show the coarsening of, of uh, the graph. So in this, uh, in the case of graph architecture, we can have deeper networks compared to uh, the octree, which quickly decimates the mesh, uh, and we cannot have too many layers. Here are classification results on model net 40. So we outperform our 
previous uh, results using the spherical kernel with octree as well and all previous method at that time is part segmentation results. So we kind of are very close to the previous results in terms of instance mean intersection over union, but we outperformed the previous uh, octree based uh, spherical kernel in the class wise mean intersection over union. Here are results on uh, you module 2014. And uh, as you can see, the GCN sort of improves significantly with mean accuracy on this data set. Uh, the overall accuracy also has uh, some improvement and as well as the mean intersection over the union. Mean accuracy is basically per class accuracy is averaged. This slide shows results on the standard data set uh, where we have a significant improvement in terms of mean intersection over union uh, from the previous method and all other methods as well. Uh, I'll skip through this uh, uh, slide quickly. Uh, again, we all perform on S3DIS. Here are some visualizations of area five, which is commonly presented as separately in this 3DS, uh, S3DIS data set. And you can see that our segmentation is very close to the ground truth. Now, we perform an ablation study uh, to show that the spherical kernel really is better than the uh, 3D CNN kernel, which uh, follows a grid-like uh, rectangular structure. So we show results where we match the number of pins as closely as possible. Perfect match cannot is not possible in this case, but we match them as closely as possible and show that the spherical kernel does uh, outperform the 3D CNN uh, in this case. So comparing separable convolution to normal convolution, uh, we show that if you use separable convolution, uh, we achieve not only <coughs> efficiency, but higher accuracy as well. Right, so, so this is the uh, instance accuracy is uh, slightly increased, whereas the GPU memory usage is significantly reduced uh, on the model X40 as well as the uh, shear fact data sets. Now, the bins of the spherical kernel were discrete. So you would convolve a point if it falls inside a bin to that particular location only. But you know that small differences in the location of the points could make them end up in one bin or the other bin. So hence, uh, this kind of kernel could be very sensitive to the sampling of the points or also to missing points uh, in the data set as well. So hence we, uh, we uh, propose a fuzzy variant of our spherical kernel, which is fuzzy uh, along the radial dimension. We, we keep it discrete in the, uh, the angular dimensions uh, still. So our kernel is basically now, instead of four by two by one, in this toy example, it will become four by one plus uh, uh, four, in, instead of four by two, it will become four by one. So these are just four bits. And the plus one is for self convolution over here. So in fuzzy kernel, each neighboring point makes use of all the kernel parameters to perform the convolution. The contribution of each point to convolution is defined by its continuous location rather than its a discrete bin. So which means that even if you have a different sampling of the same surface, the fuzzy convolution is not going to be that much sensitive as compared to the discrete kernel. Basically, the hard kernel can be considered as a special case of the fuzzy kernel. Uh, so this fuzzy convolution along with the uh, sort of a more ResNet-like uh, graph architecture uh, was published in CVPR 2020. Here we show that we have uh, the encoder part with more layers, whereas the decoder part is very simple. And we show that this architecture sort of suits segmentation better with less number of parameters and even higher accuracy. And we show that we have uh, skip connections. We make use of, uh, you know, heavy use of this uh, arch uh, ResNet-like architecture. The graph construction uh, is similar to the previous uh, paper. So instead of replicating the ResNet blocks, uh, simple one-by-one -one convolutions are used in the decoder to gain reduced parameters, 
uh, and uh, higher accuracy. And with this architecture, and even with the fuzzy kernel, which takes more computation compared compared to the discrete kernel, we can process one million points per second. And this was uh, on a, a Titan X GPU at that time. <laughs> We see that the number of parameters reduced and the accuracy has increased for all cases. So is fuzzy kernel really better than the hard spherical kernel? So for this we perform a controlled experiment where we take out points from a data set and see the, uh, its, uh, its effect on the mean intersection over union in case of segmentation. We see that the hard kernel case, the accuracy drops very quickly, whereas the fuzzy kernel remains quite stable. And this is for um, uh, mean intersection or union as well as the mean accuracy. So this sort of uh, indicates that the fuzzy kernel really is robust to uh, the sampling of points. So we also uh, compare the fuzzy versus the hard spherical kernel in terms of efficiency. So the mean training time for hard spherical kernel is 251, whereas that of fuzzy spherical kernel is of course higher because you need to uh, do more computations in this case and in, in, at inference time uh, as well. But the difference is quite small and we can cover up for dif this difference using uh, better network architectures and still gain higher accuracy. Now I'll move on to our uh, Picasso uh, library, which is a CUDA-based library for deep learning over 3D meshes. Now the 3D meshes are specific structures. They are different from graphs because here the mesh connectivity is defined by the uh, geometric shape of the object uh, rather than an, a, an, a, an ad hoc nearest neighborhood search. So our contribution is basically a GPU accelerated 3D mesh decimation on the fly algorithm. So to be able to perform uh, mesh convolutions, we do not use for this point sampling because we need to maintain the st structure of the mesh. So hence we have to decimate the mesh. To decimate the mesh, we need a CUDA based implementation of uh, the mesh decimation as well as an, uh, a, uh, an implementation that can perform this in batches so that it can plug into the deep learning framework. So, and of course, instead of treating 3D mesh as an undirected graph, we treat it as a geometric structure and propose three novel con uh, convolution modules as well. So we perform facet to vertex convolution. So facet is a terminology in 3D meshes uh, where every uh, uh, triangle is a facet or it could be, uh, could have like four corners or five corners even. Uh, if it doesn't have an edge in between. So we perform a facet to vertex convolution, which would be all the facet that's around a vertex, all the facet that's around a vertex would, would convolve into that vertex. And vertex to facet convolution would be all vertices that surround a facet would convolve into the center of the facet. And we also perform facet to facet convolution uh, to carry the texture forward. And we have already released the Picasso library, which is a self-contained library uh, implemented in TensorFlow. Uh, we are also now moving it in, uh, to PyTorch uh, that can learn from unstructured real world 3D meshes. So here I show the vertex to facet convolution. So it's basically all the vertices they are uh, convolved to give a feature map at the center for a given facet. And first uh, we sort of interpolate the, uh, the vertices to get the mean uh, along the edge <coughs> and then we, have, uh, we sort of convolve them to get a feature map at the center. Facet to vertex convolution is all facets. So we can uh, we see that this triangle, this triangle, this, this, and these triangles, they form a, uh, they surround this vertex and they are, the feature maps have been convolved to get a feature map at the center of the, uh, uh, these facets, which is the vertex. Vertex to vertex convolution is basically similar to our previous convolutions where we can use the spherical kernel or we can use simple convolutions uh, if required. Here is the structure of the Picasso library. So we have uh, um, convolutions or operations for meshes that are specific to meshes. So with all these convolutions that are there, we also define pooling and unpooling, which is basically a mesh decimation. So when you pull a mesh, it will still remain a geometric structure that will still resemble the shape of the object. And we also unpooling, uh, we also define the pooling and unpooling operations for the feature maps. Uh, and 
here we provide the CUDA based mesh simplification uh, code as well. We also provide point cloud based operation, which is convolution pooling and pooling and sampling on point clouds as well. So the CUDA based mesh uh, simplification is basically uh, an extension of the quadrate error metric and um, uh, basically, we propose a fast mesh estimation method that exploits the parallel computing power of a GPU. The main difference is, is that we do not perform iterative contraction anymore. Instead, we group the vertices into multiple isolated clusters based on their connections. Uh, and this figure basically provides a toy example to illustrate the clustering process. So during clustering, we control the expected vertex number rather than the number of facets of edges. Since the contractions of isolated clusters are independent of each other, they can be executed on a GPU in parallel. More specifically, we initialize the candidates of vertex pairs to be contracted using existing mesh edges only. The, uh, the vertex clusters are uh, then established with joint vertex pairs in the candidates before which we sort the candidates in an ascending order by their quadric cost. This is a very useful implementation for deep learning over meshes. Uh, here are some results that we show for our mesh estimation algorithm compared with the quarter error. So this is the input mesh. Uh, this is the output of vertex clustering. This is the quadric error metric output. And this is the output of our algorithm. So our algorithm is faster than vertex clustering as well as the quadric error metric uh, and also gives a, a reasonably good decimated uh, mesh of the in, uh, input mesh. So along with Picasso library, we also present a new network architecture, which we call Picasso Net, uh, and it, uh, which has uh, many different layers that you can choose. So basically the vanilla uh, block consists of two vertex to vertex convolutions with, with a short con uh, shortcut connection. The efficient block contains two vertex to vertex convolutions as well as uh, one point based convolution before each feature con uh, concatenation. It can process meshes with 1 million uh, facets per second uh, at uh, inference time while maintaining highly competitive results. The generic convolution block uses uh, sort of uh, greater than one vertex to vertex convolution together with a single point based convolution before the feature combination uh, with max speed. Now that was all about our uh, Picasso Net library. Basically, I'm not going to the details of the results. The results are similar to previous cases. The benefit of our Picasso library is that uh, it um, uh, gives a complete framework and a library which uh, you can use to design your own networks and uh, achieve state-of-the-art results uh, for uh, deep learning on 3D meshes. So the final part of my presentation is about relational graph network for 3D uh, object detection in point cloud. This is uh, an IEEE transaction on image processing. So the, here we show the overall architecture. So the first part is a 3D point based uh, uh, 3D object proposal generation module to generate 3D bonding box candidates from raw point clouds. And this is based on the point net plus plus backbone, this part. The second part is uh, a 3D uh, relation module which contains point attention pooling and 3D object object relation graph. The point attention pooling converts uh, points features contained in each um, pro uh, proposal into uniform vectors. And the 3D object object relation graph uh, is used to perform relation reasoning on multi graphs or supervised graph which is built on the fixed proposal features. Then the 3D uh, non-maximum suppression post-processing step is used to output the final 3D bonding, bonding boxes. So here uh, is the 3D object object relation graph in detail. So uh, just an overview, the first uh, part extracts uniform appearances features for all the 3D bonding box uh, proposals and use them together with uh, position features to build relational graphs. Uh, next, graph convolutions are, you know, here we use the graph convolutions uh, to perform relation reasoning. The output of all graphs are then fused uh, with the appearance features uh, to, to regress more accurate 3D bounding boxes. So 
uh, you can see that uh, we use only x, y, z geometric points and the color over here is just uh, shown for better visualization. Otherwise, you just see a, a sort of one color throughout, but we only use the x, y, z values in, in this case. And also, we construct more than one graph. So to see that the graphs do provide, this relational graph do provide uh, some benefit, uh, here we perform an ablation study. So without using the graph, we have a mean inter, uh, average precision of detection at 0.25 mean intersection over union of 57.9%. So that's without using graph. But using one graph, this jumps to 58.6. With two graphs, it jumps to 58.9 and with three graphs, it is 59.2. So that's where it peaks and for all our remaining experiments, you use three graphs. Uh, and after that, uh, it slowly starts dropping, but the accuracy remains higher than when using no graphs for all values of the graph, right? So, so if you use graphs, doesn't matter how many graphs you use, the accuracy will always be higher than the case when you don't use a graph. So here is a, uh, uh, sample visualization. So these are uh, for the, uh, we have a learned feature graph over here in the middle as well. So this is just an input RB, RGB image just to show you how the scene looks like. We don't use the RGB image or the R, uh, RGB values of the points. These are the bonding box proposals. And this is just one of the graphs. So we use three such graphs uh, for relationship between the oven and uh, cabinet, uh, oven and fridge and so on. And this is our final output of detections. And this is the ground truth. You can see that the this box, which is for the table over here, uh, it covers parts that are not even scanned by the point. So, so I don't know, maybe the point, this ground truth was drawn uh, using the RGB image, but our algorithm more accurately isolates these points as uh, in the detected uh, box. It is comparison to existing methods. So we have uh, mean average precision uh, at uh, 0.25 uh, intersection over union. And this is for 3D bonding boxes rather than 2D bonding uh, boxes. So here's uh, results on scanner data set. So we have the highest mean average precision. And here are results on the Sun RGBD data set. We again have the highest uh, mean average precision. This is, these are results on the Kitty data sets. Now, Kitty data set is a, a very large data set and it has many different categories. So we present results for three categories which uh, are more important for uh, from the point of view of self-driving you know, in the outdoor streets. And this is also uh, the only data set that is, uh, besides the facades, you know, the only data set that realistically presents the self-driving scenario in 3D point clouds. So we, we show results for car, pedestrian, and cyclist. And we separate them into easy cases, moderate cases, and hard cases. So you can see that the best performance uh, is always uh, in the hard cases is always by our algorithm, which is shown in bold. Underline is the second best performance. So our algorithm either has the second best performance or the best performance. Look at the hard cases. For cyclist, we have the best performance. Moderate cases, best performance. For pedestrian, we have the best performance, best performance, and second best performance for moderate cases. But for hard cases in all three, uh, uh, you know, for all three objects, car, pedestrian, and cyclist, our algorithm performs the best. That's because it exploits the object-object relationship. Right, so you can uh, see more uh, details uh, about this in the paper. And I'll finally conclude my presentation uh, with these points that the spherical kernel is a natural choice for unstructured 3D point clouds. Fuzzy convolution is better since real point clouds are never uniformly sampled. We can easily extend latest uh, CNN tricks to 3D, for example, pooling, unpooling, separable convolution, ResNet block, DenseNet block, uh, bottleneck layers, and you name it, everything that you can do in CNNs. Since we have defined convolutions in 3D, we can do that in uh, 3D architectures as well. And our mesh simplification uh, code basically is very useful for deep learning because you can uh, run multiple batches uh, uh, for efficient deep learning over 3D meshes. So you can give it like 15 batch, a batch of 15 meshes and it will decimate them in parallel so that it can be processed on the fly for deep learning. You don't have to store the decimated meshes because some deep uh, learning over graphs method they actually uh, store copies of the uh, uh, decimated graphs uh, in library. Not all of them, but some of them do. 
then our Picasso library provides useful tools for deep learning over 3D meshes, which includes the point clouds. So you could have meshes uh, and or point clouds. You could use the deep, uh, the Picasso library for uh, designing your own architecture with a, a choice of four, five different uh, convolution kernels and all operations that are possible in uh, are currently defined in uh, CNNs. And finally, the relational graph network uh, provides useful information about context to improve detection accuracy. So the work that I've covered here uh, are based on these uh, three CVPRs, a PAMI and a TIP paper, and the code is available at these links uh, if you are interested to uh, dig deeper in this. Thank you very much, and I will conclude my presentation with this.